<laughs> hi, hi. I'm here today to talk to you about how Tetsuya Nomura designs female characters. I know you want to hear that from me, the uh, grown woman that just cut card captor Sakura Wispies into her hair. Can't really see it with the vest. Hold on. Uh, but this is to say nothing about the way he writes women, which um, uh, tends to be different based on who else is on his writing team. Kingdom Hearts writers, maybe say no to your boss every once in a while. Uh, hit him over the head with the script. Lose your job. Live a little. Now, oh. now peak female character design, for me personally, I found comes in the cross section between utilitarian functionality and character expression. And the pitfalls that many designers fall into when it comes to designing fictional women is that they pay attention to neither. They do not care about the personalities of their ladies and will slap them in whatever shows off their body more, and they do not care if an actual human person could move around in it. And what I truly stand Nomura for is that when it comes to his character designs, he will double down and blow raspberries at anyone that tries to stifle his fun. All the belts are cool, y'all. Shut up. His excessiveness is very expressive and you can learn a lot about who one of his characters is just by looking at them, which is the job of a character designer. And that cross section that we talked about earlier is primarily, not all the time, but primarily where Nomura lives, especially when it comes to his girls. From her first movie, Barbie and the Nutcracker, Sugar Plum Princess Barbie is... Nice size! Nice size! Sugar Plum Princess Barbie! A glittering gown, a sparkling crown, there's no one like you! I wanna be a princess too! A golden heart, the magic stars, dance a pretty dance! You're my little Sugar Plum Princess Barbie! My size Sugar Plum Princess Barbie doll is three feet tall and comes with crown locket and outfit you can wear. If you've never worn heels before, obviously the shorter the heel, the easier it is to walk in and it is an added bonus if the heel has a little bit of thickness because that makes it that much easier to balance on. Especially if you have a wedge. I feel like I could do a backflip in a wedge. I can't do a backflip normally, but I feel like I could pull it off in a wedge. And of course, if you want to give anyone in heels some more stability, putting them in a boot is a great idea. Because this little motion right here, this is where blisters happen. It is not a good time. So to have the entire foot encased will give your person so much more mobility and confidence in their actions. And that is why it's such a welcome change that Nomura puts like all of his ladies in and all of his more extreme heels, which are very few in number, are thick and attached to boots. And that is important since many of the stories that Nomura is in charge of designing characters for are these large, sweeping fantasy stories where the characters have to physically cover a lot of ground on top of being majorly about warriors. And while we are on a roll with praising the ever-living snot out of Nomura, I do appreciate how, now that we are in next-gen graphics, he can flex just how much he does recognize the importance of a well-defined shoulder muscle. Get it? Get it? Some wordplay. <laughs> The new Disney Perfume Princess Collection makes you feel as pretty as a princess. Jasmine's beautiful. From her magic wand, her scent fills the air. I smell as pretty as Jasmine. She has her own fragrance to share. Dab some on her, a little yeah. on you. Smell nice smells pretty as Rose. And you can be <laughs> as pretty as a princess too. The new Disney Perfume Princess Doll Collection. All five sold separately with a different flower scent. Now, as far as I've been exposed to, Nomura has only really designed one sexy female character in his career. Uh, yeah, let's take a pit stop in Tifa's titties. Now, I've never played the original Seven. Uh, most of what I know about Tifa I've learned through osmosis, and um, I do understand that the remake has some big differences.
Ooh. But from what I've seen, when people talk about what they like about Tifa, they say she's very kind, very caring, very motherly. I've heard motherly specifically a lot over the years. Um, oh, and she's also this complete martial arts master badass, you know? That's her character, that's her personality. She's like this protector, this guardian. Uh, Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy X AU, where everyone's a guardian to Aerith's summoner. But she does have this reputation of being one of the video game sex symbols of the 90s. And I wonder why that is. Big boobs? What? Um, now, uh, I feel very alone in this, but one of the ways that I've come to understand the world is that sexy is a character trait and therefore has nothing to do with your physical appearance. Not the clothes you wear, nor the shape of your body, nor whether other people find you sexually attractive makes you sexy. And because it is a character trait, that means that some people have it and some people don't and both are completely normal and natural and good. And this means that fictional characters can also be sexy or not sexy. But it gets so frustrating when it comes to female characters because the straight men that both design them and consume them want to fuck them. So that automatically makes them sexy even when that has nothing to do with who they are as people. Fictional women are always seen as sexy by default. And this is frustrating for Tifa in particular because nowhere in her personality traits does her character lean towards sexy. Having big boobs in a crop top doesn't make someone sexy, that just means they're wearing a short shirt. And Tifa has been dropped in this sexy box for decades just because some weaves sexual lies her. <laughs> And while we're talking about Tifa's body, why, oh why did they nerf her? Look at them, they're so small, so teeny tiny. I could snap them in half. Those arms, why? Namara, I want you to look at this. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Do you see it? Look at this. Look at this. Do you see this? Are you looking? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Are you seeing this? Look at this. My arm should not be bigger than Tifa's. Like, are you kidding me? Come on. I mean, like, you know, and like this, this should be like your baseline. Like Tifa should be like at least three times this. Also, hey, do you want to look at that? Do you want to look at that? You wanna look at that? You gave her thigh highs for a reason, Namora! Why wasn't it to emphasize her quads? My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Make it make sense! From Disney's Mulan, secret hero Mulan, the army's calling to you, but you're flowing hair. Her beautiful hair's gone. She's ready for training. So much to learn you can do with Captain Shane. So, okay, if you say Tifa's not a sexy character, what makes you think that Lulu is? Well, it's the way she holds herself, the air about her, her voice. Because sexy is a character trait, it is then impossible to design a sexy character. To make a character sexy, there needs to be a collaboration between directors, writers, designers, animators, voice actors. A character only becomes sexy when they're brought to life. And from a design standpoint, the fact that this character is the sexiest in his roster only dumps more points into Namora's corner because, I mean, yeah, she does have a lot of 
degolotage, but almost every other square inch of her body is covered in thick, billowing leather and fur. Except for that little thigh window, which is very important, and that's why Nomura is the master and a genius. And I can only imagine what kind of horrid goth monstrosity she's wearing for shoes under all those belts. But because she is a black mage that does not do a lot of physical activity and fights from the back lines, it would work well for her character if she did have some outrageous heels. The point is, a female character doesn't have to be showing a lot of skin to be sexy. And even if she is, that doesn't make her a sex worker. What? Anastasia, the adventure, the magic, the story of an orphan girl who's really a princess. Now you can bring her magic home. It's Anastasia, the princess, just like in the movie. Dreamwalls Anastasia is beautiful in her gorgeous gown. And pretty long hair. With her music tape and magical dance stand, you can make her twirl around. Look, it's Dimitri. May I have this dance? <laughs> Relive the magic, the adventure, only with Anastasia. New Anastasia with dance stand and cassette. Dimitri sold separately, tape player not included. Hey, a uh, hard turn here. But I want to talk about the only times I've ever really been uh, disappointed with Nomura's clothing choices. I mean, his designs are usually too immaculate to ever really leave a viewer with a sense of wanting. So it's a rare occurrence. <laughs> For Axel and Xion's clothes, I feel completely disappointed that after years and years of existing solely in their organization coats, Nomura reached deep down into his soul and decided to put them in all black again. Why can't we have just like a little color, you know, mix up the palettes a little bit? I mean, Lee's color story of flaming red asshole hair, traffic cone orange, khaki, and neon yellow wasn't the easiest on the eyes, but at least it was something. And you can take, and you can take the idea that Xion belongs in overall shorts for my cold and crested hands. <laughs> ah, and that brings me to my biggest question to Nomura. Why do you insist on putting a select few of physically active women in skirts? That girl was the beauty of Disney's Hercules. Fashion Secrets Megara. She is beautiful. What's her secret? A look for day, a look for night. Her magic ribbon does it right. Give her a look for every mood. Catch the eye of that hunky muscle dude. What the boys in love? <laughs> She's cool and classy. What's her secret? She's sleek and sassy. The ribbon's her secret. Fashion Secrets Megara. Hercules horse and batteries not even. You tell him, girl. Skirts are just fine. Skirts are a perfectly reasonable and expressive fashion choice. And the length of that skirt, as we explained earlier, has nothing to say about the character traits of a person. I don't blame Kyrie for wearing a short skirt in Kingdom Hearts 2 because she wasn't planning on being thrust into life-altering circumstances one random weekend. One random weekend. I can, however, blame whatever grown-ass man decided to model panties onto a 15-year-old. My problem with Kairi having a skirt in Kingdom Hearts 3 is that every level of management should have known that this was a bad idea. From Nomura designing it, to the three good fairies what made it, to Kairi herself, all know that she is going into a war. And why a skirt would be anyone's preference for battle armor is confounding. I'll take it up with the Scots. Why, co why couldn't we have just gotten Keyblade armor for everybody else? Everyone wanted that. You're like, you didn't treat, you didn't treat the Keyblade war as big as you had treated it before. Ugh. Ugh. And while I do appreciate that everyone took one look at her new clothes and went, uh, yeah, there are bike shorts under that. I have the worrisome duty to report that that might not be the case. <laughs> During battle scenes, there is a hard black line, which should be a definitive yes for shorts, but in data greeting, there is a soft line, a shadow really, which would indicate that the black on her model is only a stylistic choice in order to PGify the very real possibility that we could have a panties gate 2.0 on our hands. Yes, this is very important, groundbreaking investigative journalism. Thank you for my Nobel Prize, Mr. President. Why can't we have a little bit of fun with practical women's clothing? If you did, you wouldn't have to put in the extra effort of animating her legs and feet just so to keep all these shots of her flying. 
shots that you chose to put her in, and from those angles, modest. I mean, you have Aqua right there who strikes the perfect balance between flowy and graceful while still being practical and covered. And especially since you were developing 7R at the same time and you gave Tifa shorts under her skirt. Skirt that you gave a character you knew was going to be flipping and kicking back in 1997. So you just don't learn anything, do you? Nope. Great. Disney's Aladdin presents. Hey, yeah! I get it! Having baubles and bracelets are feminine and fun, and we should embrace feminine things and not degrade them. But how come Tifa gets to have the perfect blend of utilitarian wrist guards and accessories when Kairi has to settle for only having her sweatbands back in concept art? We could have had it and also, Kairi was the queen of squirts before Tifa, so let's make sure we get that history right. And I know I'm talking a lot about Kairi and Tifa, but here is my conspiracy theory. There is a quote from the Kingdom Hearts 1 Ultimania where he says that designing the Kingdom Hearts characters was obviously the most freedom that he had ever been given up to that point. And that Kyrie's design was really peak heroin for him. And since Kingdom Hearts was one of the first fully stylized uh, 3D games that Square produced, like, like, like they didn't have the limitations of the block people, E -E. Kyrie's Kingdom Hearts 1 design could be seen as a soft reboot of Tifa's, just in a more colorful setting. And that is why Tifa's black sports bra and undershorts did not come out of nowhere and is not a blight on video game sexiness censorship. The seeds were sown for decades and you all just weren't paying attention. As with anything Nomura does, his female character designs are a mixed bag. A bag that's filled with mostly cool stuff, but that one bad jelly bean is all the more off-putting because it's surrounded by really good ones. So I will end this video with my ongoing critique to Nomura that you just have to think about your female characters more. From their point of view, think about their feelings, yada yada yada. Maybe put on some heels every now and then, huh? Little, little.